Just get rid of all of them. Omid shakes hands with Sussex to drop a new disaster on the royals. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the King YouTube channel. According to the latest updates, royals are facing new bombshells from Sussexes, as the book by their cheerleader-in-chief Scooby-Doo has been leaked to U.S. celebrity sites. Scooby-Doo is leaking some explosive claims, including that Harry was kept in the dark about the Queen's failing health in the hours before she passed away. Okay, I mean, come on. Who do they think is going to believe this? It was obvious to anybody who had been paying attention that the Queen's health had been in a steady decline in the year before she passed away. She was looking very frail, and other members of the family were taking over some of her engagements. Maybe if Harry had spent a little more time with her in the final years, he would have understood that. I'm an American, and even I realize that the Queen was not in good health. Anybody who saw her in the last few months of her life understood that she wasn't doing well, and on the morning of September 8th, it was reported that they were worried about the Queen's health. An announcement like that had never been made before. When a loved one's life suddenly starts coming to an end, there is a lot to do at a time when you just want to grieve. Harry was the one who ran off to California at a time when the Queen was not young, and in a situation like that, he should have understood that keeping him updated was not at the top of the list of priorities. In an interview, Harry said that he went to visit the Queen before he went to Invictus Games in The Hague in April of 2022. He said that he wanted to make sure she was being looked after by her staff properly. He had to have noticed the Queen wasn't doing well. So how is Scooby-Doo now claiming that Harry had no idea that his grandmother was not doing well? I guess Harry and Meghan were just too busy with trashing the royal family to pay attention to the news. This is another ploy to try to make us feel sorry for Harry, but guess what, Harry? It's not going to work. Scooby-Doo is also saying that William and Harry's relationship is broken beyond repair because William views his brother as a defector. Okay, so in the excerpt shared with People magazine, he claims there is no going back for William and Harry. And he also claims that absolutely nothing has changed since Harry released Spare earlier this year. I say it's a good thing that Harry was kept in the dark. Otherwise, Scooby-Doo would be giving us the full account of who said what, when they said it. The royal family understood that having Harry around was dangerous and they wanted at least that moment to be private. I cannot blame them for that. It's also been reported that Charles got Harry's first call in six months to wish him a happy birthday the other day. There is not a big enough apology on the planet to give them a chance to get back in. So disgraceful, and he thinks a phone call is enough to fix everything he did? Of course not. It's just ridiculous at this point. I mean, how many more times is Harry going to try to lure his father into a trap with the prospect of a reconciliation? And then he discovers that Harry's going to betray all kinds of confidences for money if he doesn't get his way. Harry needs to remain on the outside. The fact that he is there, though, that's his own fault. So no, we're not going to feel sorry for him for that. At this point, Charles has no choice but to stay away from the two of them, because anything he does or says is going to be monetized by them. And to think Megan was on that call too. She just had to insert herself into this like always. We already know what she thinks of the royal family and the king, but she is desperate for that royal connection because otherwise she's a nobody. Well, the fact is she's still a nobody, but she's not accepting that. King Charles is a good man. He raised William and Harry after the tragic passing of their mother. And Harry is a hostage to this nasty, evil witch, Meghan Markle, who not only will not allow Harry to meet his own father-in-law, but she also won't allow their kids to have any contact with their wider families or relatives, if the kids are real. I'm a parent too, so I understand why Charles says that his door is always going to be open to Harry. But at the same time, I think Charles knows he has got to be very careful. He shouldn't ever be alone with either Meghan or Harry, because who knows what they're going to say. They could have recording devices, and they could twist what he says. Harry's already said that he has no interest in returning to the UK to live, so let's just hope that's true. For a parent to have to cut ties with a child, honestly, I think it's the hardest thing a parent could do. But still, you simply cannot tolerate certain things, especially from a family member who believes that it's okay to keep damaging you and the rest of the family. We all need peace in our lives. 
and it's not just the one destructive family member who should get what they want. Adults make their own decisions, and they have to deal with the consequences. But is anybody surprised by any of this? They have accused the family of releasing negative stories meant to damage them at high-profile moments, yet they do precisely that again and again and again. I don't understand if they know how transparent they are. I hope they keep it up, though, because at least this way they are destroying their own reputations. Harry just needs to let it go. He's looking so desperate these days. He's like the guy who quit his job on Friday with a dressing down to co-workers and bosses and then keeps on showing up the next week and can't even get past the lobby. Harry left his job and he has trashed his former co-workers and bosses ever since then. So why on earth should he be invited to any other company events? I don't even know who is truly interested in Meghan and Harry at this point. I know they've still got their Sussex sugars or squatties or whatever they call themselves, but... I don't see how there could be very many of them left. And the media is encouraging all of their nonsense, but again, I think it's because they are paying these media outlets to publish stories about them. They've got their PR people hard at work. It's about time, though, that we just stop hearing about them. We are sick and tired of it. And Scooby-Doo can just shut his mouth and keep it shut forever. Scooby-Doo is a liar just like Megan and Harry. I'm tired of the two of them and their desperate need for attention, fame, and money. It's really gotten boring at this point. We all knew that Scooby-Doo was going to show up again after Charles's birthday, so incredibly predictable. Their PR team just puts out anything and everything to get their names back in the headlines. But at this point, we know it's a bunch of lies, and it's just sad because it looks like it's never going to end. William, though, William has a job to do. He needs to defend the country and its countrymen. And if he feels like Harry has decided to live the celebrity life in Hollywood and be disloyal to his country and his family, then all right. William has done his job by standing up for the people to whom he dedicated his life instead of his snowflake brother. Harry is the least of his problems. There is a really severe cost of living crisis right now happening in the UK. That's a lot more important than Harry pitching a fit in the corner. So I'm glad that it seems like the King and William are focused on what they should be focusing on, serving their people. Excerpts from Scooby-Doo's book are already being published in U.S. media, so it seems like they are expecting to make up before more revelations from this new book are released into the public domain. At this point, it seems like they're panicking. Recollections may vary. It's an important thing to remember. Scooby-Doo wasn't there, and Harry and Meghan's recollections are almost always lies. That book is going to be a waste of paper. I'm tired of hearing these two. I mean, Harry's nearly 40, Meghan's nearly 50, and they're whining about their hurt feelings, but the rest of the world is facing real problems right now. If King Charles falls for this nonsense then honestly, he does not deserve the support of his countrymen anymore. But I think he knows better. I think he's going to keep a level head, and he's not going to let them get too close. And what about you? Do you agree with these opinions? Please tell me your point of view below in the comments. If you preferred our video today, don't be afraid to like and share it with anyone else who would enjoy it anytime you want. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.